Okay, um, this came in as a donation to the channel. Thank you very much. Um, I remember drooling over these <laughs> in the old days. I wanted one of these so bad, so bad. They were like the holy grail for analyzing your uh, antenna. And they were like super expensive. <laughs> I just couldn't afford one. I forget what they were. Like 100 and... God, that's still like, I, I want to say like $189 or something. They were like, they were like a ton of money. Um, and so I never had one. Well, guess what? I got one now. <laughs> so... What do they say down under? Uh, don't turn it on. So we are going to take a look inside because I want to see. I kind of want to see what's inside this thing. Think it has a microprocessor? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's all analog circuitry. Oh, look at that. Look at all the batteries. Oh, holy crud. <laughs> Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten double A's. <laughs> That's a lot of double A's. You go broke just buying batteries for the thing. Uh, yeah, luckily there's a little socket over here that allows you to put in 12 volts, although it's really, really, really crooked. Yeah, it's really, really, really crooked. I think we'll, uh, I think we'll desolder that and move it around because I don't like the way that looks. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's a pushy button, pushy button here. Uh-oh, I'm going to have to eat crow, maybe. <laughs> Is that a microprocessor? There might be a microprocessor down in there. Oh, it does have a display. That's right, it has a digital display. So it does have a microprocessor. Oh, I'm so disappointed. So disappointed. Wow. Yeah, I don't think this thing comes apart easy either. Because it kind of goes together as you solder away. Like this connector here, and maybe I can take it out. Might have to disconnect this one. What is that? Frequency counter. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, dear. We're going to have to look inside, aren't we? Aren't we? <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, it did come with this big manual. Big, thick manual, too. And uh, I... Seems, seems like all the MFJ stuff came with schematics. Let's see if this one does. I don't have a lot of room on my bench here. I've been working on some other things. Let's see here. Let me zoom out a bit here. Yeah, I don't think this one's got... I don't think this one's got schematics. Maybe... Yeah, maybe there are schematics online, but this is just the... This is just the how-to manual. Hmm. Let's see, what would be required, whoa, can't talk today. What would be required to take this apart? Lots of screws. Uh, lots of screws. These would come out. And that would have to come out. That would leave her out. All right, all right, all right. They'll call me a wuss. They'll call me a wuss. Alright, that got loose. We're going to have to uh, take off the knobs here. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, that's all loose. Well, now we need to Loosen the connector here. Oh, there's a there's a nut. Great, and it is not captured. So, like I said, I think the connector was put in first, and then the the board was put in, and then the connector was soldered to the board. But we will try to get it out the opposite way. Let me get some tools here.
washers here. All right, is it loose? Yes, it's loose. Will it come out? Will it come out? Let me take these switches out. Fancy switches. All right. Now it's holding it up. It should come out. Uh, no, no, no. Man. bottom side of the board hmm. and it's not want to come out because it's soldered on so we will have to desolder it all right just a second need to take those off. I just need to take this off. Okay, okay. There. Okay, that's loose. Whoa. Now what am I missing? My goodness. My goodness. What is the trouble here? There, that's going. Got more switches. Hmm. Oh, there we go. There's some more switch stuff. There. It'd be fun to put this thing back together. Ah, uh, there we go. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right. Whoa! No wonder these things were expensive. Whoa! All right. I don't want to take the front panel off. I'm just going to bend the wires here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's a pick processor. Wow, and lots of stuff. <laughs> okay, let me uh, zoom in. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow, lots of stuff. So here's the processor. Got a bunch of adjustments here. A little adjustment there. There's a couple. There's a pot underneath here that you can't see. There's one down there. Wow, lots of, here, one's here. Lots of adjustments. There's some cans here. Wow. Wow. Very fancy. Very, very fancy. I'm going to find a schematic with this thing. Holy crud. This goes to the uh, LCD display in the front. So it's just an 8-bit parallel jubber thing. 1998 MJF Enterprises model MFJ259B. Yikes. Yeah. A lot of stuff in there. A lot of stuff. All right, I thought it was gonna be pretty simple inside, but no, it's very complex inside. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, the input's over here. So the input is down there underneath the... Uh, can you see that now? It's kind of under there, kind of down under there. I'm sorry, I don't want to take that off. Oh, there we go, that's better. Can you see down there? Yeah, there's a pot, 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 pot. Yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, there's five, no, more. One, two, three, four, five, there's six adjustments right at the front end. Yikes, nightmare to uh, try to get this thing to work. Huh. A lot of calibration required, I guess. Oh, there's my, there's my, there's my connector. Huh. Wow. No parts in the back. Charger off, charger on. Oh, you can make the batteries into charging. You put 10 AA nickel metal hydrides back in the day or whatever. Yikes. Okay, well, seen the inside, so I guess it's time to put it back together, which I'll do off camera. And uh, yeah, we'll try to turn it on and measure some antennas. All right, it's all back together. So let me uh, hook up my two meter antenna. This is a two meter J-pole. And uh, we'll turn the power on. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's talking to us, look at that. Voltage is okay. I'm using the uh, charger that came with it, so no batteries inside. 22 megahertz, it is not doing well. 29 to one SWR, okay. So there's a switch here. It goes from 1.8 to four. 4 to 10, 10 to 27, 27 to 70, 70 to 114, 114 to 170, there we go. And oh, we're doing better now, let's see here. This were, why, do, oh, X, oh, here we go, 1.7 vis were. Yeah, here's the, re, the uh, resistance and the reactance, all right, 32 ohms. And then if I tune it, let's see, which way do we go? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's quite sensitive. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we can dip. We can dip the SWR right about there. It's reading 50 ohms. Uh, SWR 1.1. Reactance of 5. Look at that. Very good. So if we go through the 2-meter through the band, we go up here to... 1.7, 1.6, this is 1.7, 1.6, and it goes back down, 147, 148. So it's pretty broadband antenna, it's not bad. Um, no worse than 1.7 anywhere. Very nice, I like it. So I'm also using it at 440, which this doesn't go up to. <laughs> I, I've measured it before on different analyzers and uh, that it does tune up on 440 as well. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, gate. Oh, look at that gate. What does gate mean? Z? I don't know. And mode. Coax loss? Capacitance? Oh. Inductance? Look at that. Frequency counter. Cool. Whatever that is. Reactance? That's what we're in. And that... We go around, yeah, it goes all around. We'll go back to reactants. I like it. Oh, I would have died for this thing back in the day. Should we uh, compare it against uh, something fancy like a VNA, a VNA? Sure, why not? We could plot this out, you know, we could get a piece of paper and plot it out, see what it looks like. Okay, I plotted the data out. It's got kind of a double dip here. It's got a dip right at about 144. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm missing the data here. It actually comes like this. Sorry. 
actually dips down to one to one, right at 144. Okay, so it's got a it's got a big dip here at uh, 144, then it comes up 145 and a half, and then dips again around 147 to 147 and a half. So, yeah, let's go uh, put it on a VNA and see what it does. All right, uh, first of all, I hooked up to the Nano VNA here. And uh, this is 144 to 148, and this is a return loss. So we have about a minus 20 dB return loss, and it goes down to about a minus 30 dB return loss. And it's nice and smooth from uh, 144 to 148. So uh, let me repeat that experiment with uh, my fancy HP analyzer. And we'll see what it says. And I'm also showing a nice slow roll off from 144 to 148. And I changed the units on this one to SWR so it matches the, uh, matches the other machine. But you can see that uh, it's a very, very smooth roll off from about a 1.3 uh, down to a 1. Um, so it's giving me completely different answers on the VNAs than it is on the MJF, MFJ. So that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> like, you know, I trust this instrument. I trust the, the Nano VNA has been very trustworthy. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Let's go back to the, uh, to the MFJ. I've got one more trick that we can try um, that, it, that it's not doing right now. So we'll give that a, we'll give that a look-see. Okay, the only other thing that I could think of is that those, well, that's not true. No, I take it all back. I thought maybe because the, the uh, HP VNA has this at earth ground, that would make a difference, whereas this is a floating ground until it gets over to the antenna where there's a, uh, where there's a ground there. But the Nano VNA also had a floating ground, so nope, that's not it. Um, and off camera, I did add a ground here and didn't move at all. So... Uh, so what's wrong with this picture? Why, why is this, uh, why is this so sensitive and gives me a really bad number, gives me a really bad number around 145 megahertz, um, whereas the VNAs do not. So has this been lying to everybody all those years? Maybe. I, I don't know. Let's go ahead and put a load on this thing, just for fun. I'll put 50 ohms on it, and we'll see if it measures perfectly everywhere. It measures 46 ohms, which is kind of wrong to begin with. And then look at that. Wow, this thing's really zooming in. Yeah, this meter here is kind of kind of wonky. If you, you kind of need to look up there. It's 1.2, 1.1. .1. And other frequencies should measure 49 everywhere. Maybe this thing, maybe you can cow this thing. Maybe it's been sitting around a long time. Anyway, I'm a bit disappointed. I thought these were like the holy grail. But it definitely seems to be funny on uh, on this measurement.